first, let's see how Toyota's latest rocket launch is coming along with this third generation Supra. It's sort of a milestone for Toyota's top sports model. For one thing, this isn't just a fancy six-cylinder Celica anymore, which is what it had been since its introduction in the 1979 model year. The Celica itself is all new this year, too. But now it's front-wheel drive. The Supra, it remains rear drive. So finally, it's very much its own car. And that makes this a big investment for Toyota. The result is to make the new Supra a serious challenger for the flashy U.S. sports and pony car marketplace. And this is a big car, too. It's longer and heavier than a Corvette or Ford's Mustang, and only slightly smaller than Chevy's Camaro. But the Supra still doesn't have V8 power. But then, maybe it doesn't need it. We say that after our first experience with Toyota's new Supra. It was on a day at a fast track in Phoenix, Arizona. The Sports 2 Plus 2 is a heavyweight, 3,450 pounds at its lightest, and it was called on to make short and generally impressive work of Firebird Raceway. It may be farther from a slot car than ever, but the Supra now has handling and braking prowess that's almost on par with its sophisticated power and computerized gadgets. Like previous Supras, the new car is aimed at buyers who want lots of luxury with their sport. So the ride is softer than its U.S. stablemates, with more than a modest amount of body roll. However, with the adjustable suspension in its sport mode, the stiffer shock valving for the all-independent wishbone suspension kept cornering drama to a minimum. It's still pony car skittish at the rear, but less so than the brute force Mustang GT. Its abilities appear to trail only the Camaro IROC Z. And if you go in over your head, there's always enough inline six-cylinder power to pull you out. Torque is not in the V8 class, but it suits the car's balance. The very fast power rack and pinion steering is a bit sparse in on-center feel, but it yanks the Supra's nose around smartly. The 50 Series Eagle tires keep the rear end from straying wide until you've had more than enough warning. Overall, it's a hefty feeling but predictable handler. Styling has also moved completely away from the Celica. The Supra sports a much more aggressive front end. Yet the body has one of the cleanest, most beautiful shapes of any sporty hatchback. We like the flip-up headlights with integral washers. Then there's the ground-hugging air dam with driving lamps, the flared wheel openings, and side curtains. They all look sensational. The rear drive configuration not only allowed for a lower overall stance and slipperier styling, it also fit the engineer's desire for a complex, competent suspension. That desire is part of the reason that despite being slightly smaller than last year's car, the new Supra has gained almost 500 pounds. The suspension is assembled on a pair of subframes that are attached to the rest of the chassis. A good system for production, but not always for weight watching. Weight also gets added by the revamped double overhead Cam 6, which now sports three liters of displacement and a four valve per cylinder breathing system. Ratings are a robust 200 horsepower and 185 pound-feet of torque. But we suspect that a lot of those extra pounds came from the loaded nature of the interior of every Supra. It's not only wonderful to look at, but to many it has the best parts of the car. Starting with the seats. Nothing short of superb. Adjustable eight ways with power assist for side and lower back. The sport or leather package adds power height and seat travel. Then there's the fully automatic climate system and a super sounding stereo with one button equalizer seen first on the new Celica. What the Celica didn't get was the Supra's dual antenna system, one in the fender and another one in the hatch. There's also a memory tilt telescopic steering wheel and on that wheel are fingertip auto cruise controls. The gauges are housed in a handsome inverted L-shaped pod that puts everything but oil pressure and voltage in direct line of sight through the steering wheel. Only the clock doesn't look integrated into the dash design. There is a back seat, but as with other so-called pony cars, it's best used folded flat for luggage, as the cargo bay is rather shallow, if easily reached through the large glass hatch. The Supra is also available with a single panel removable roof for effective semi-open air motoring, but it is cumbersome to remove and when it's stored, it takes up almost all cargo space. As you'd expect, Supras with the open roof do have more body flex than the hardtop models, so the open car seems less secure in tight turns and less sturdy over hard bumps. So we opted for the hardtop on return to our home ground. 
Here we confirm the good handling manners of the Supra. Gas shocks help here and provide dampening for a comfortable and quiet 67 decibel at 55 mile per hour ride. Our car had the sport package that adds limited slip and Toyota's electronically modulated suspension. Like most automatic systems, it will adjust shock valving, not spring rates. So having TEMS in either its sport or normal mode made little difference in handling ability only in driver feel. The five-speed shifter is perfectly positioned and near perfect in linkage execution. It transmits power to the rear wheels with smooth precision. So a zero to 60 time of 8.5 seconds was faster than it felt. Likewise, the 16 seconds needed for an 87 mile per hour quarter mile. Braking too is most assuring, although we wonder why such a high-tech model doesn't yet have anti-lock brakes. It would have been appreciated even though the all-disc system was easy to modulate. Still, the Super needed only a mere 102 feet to stop fade free from 55. So there are a lot of positives on the new $18,000 plus Supra. Performance parameters of acceleration, handling, and braking. And it's a beautiful car, inside and out, with loads of standard and optional creature comforts. Negatives include its weight, an automatic suspension system that really doesn't do much, and if ordered, a difficult to handle roof panel. But the last two items are almost expected on this class of import, and the new Toyota Supra is a class leader. But is it able competition for the likes of Mustangs and Camaros? Well, not current designs, but maybe future ones. Even without V8 muscle, the Supra gives us a good estimate of where large road-hugging pony cars are headed. It's just that the Supra got there first. <laughs>